up, you guys? This is Robert at Shy Bears Plus. You found us on YouTube. Check us out on Twitter at Shy Bears Plus and Instagram at Shy Bears Plus. I am in the Shy Bears Plus studio talking via the World Wide Web with at plus underscore shy. Jeff, Jeff, say hello to the beautiful people. The beautiful people, the beautiful people. <laughs> adjusting, oh, adjusting. What's up, basement? Hey, what's up, man? Thanks again for joining us. As always, the people love Jeff. Don't forget to check out Jeff's best bets. He promised that he will be back. So if you're waiting yep. for it, it's coming. Um, I think everybody's uh, ready for your uh, DraftKings uh, money-making prophecies uh, video. Hopefully I they're ready for you. this beard. I heard or saw you uh, made some money uh, yesterday. Not betting advice for entertainment purposes only. Maybe I will make some videos. But what we're really going to talk about today is week eight, the three and four New York Jets, J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 at the three and three Chicago Bears. Uh, last week, the... Bears lost to the Patriots. They be they came one yard away, as we talked about earlier in the, our last video, one yard away from tying up the game and almost taking down the mighty, mighty New England Patriots. And the Jets got crushed by Minnesota. I think it was 37-17. It was pretty rough. Um, All that on Jeff's best bets. Oh, yes. I uh, Fast fact. Um oh, I used to always get uh, Powell and Crowell mixed up, and then they end up on the same team. If I mix it up, disclaimer, I'm a human. Just All so right. you know, if I throw it out there. Uh, but what we're really going to do right now is stats of the week. Usually, that's uh, Jeff at plus underscore shy's place to shine the best stats of the week. A couple of mine that I just had. I only have two. Akeem Hicks had a 91.7 rating for PFF. I think that's important because I feel like there is opportunities on the inside of this Jets line to get pressure in the face yeah. of Sam Darnold. And Trubisky is sixth in the league at 44.4% in converting on third down via the pass. Um, so he's a kid who is getting it done. All the criticism that he's taken, he is getting first downs. Yeah, uh, that's pretty good that you mentioned that because we might dive into some third down percentages Woo. for the Bears offense here on Saturday of the week. Stats of the week. Let's start off with the defense. The defense only has one stat, uh, sack in the last two weeks after being in the top three in the league in uh, sacks through five weeks. Uh, we have lost uh, three games this year uh, by a combined 11 points. The defense has given up 22.8 uh, points per game. Well, the offense has scored 28.3, or the Bears have scored that. We're still number two in turnover differential with us, plus seven. We're second in the NFL with 17 total takeaways, the defenses. Let's move over to the offense. They're fourth in the NFL and third down uh, percentage, uh, uh, converting those third downs, excuse me. That's better than the Rams and the Patriots. They're the second least penalized team on offense. There you go. And our Mitchell Trubisky stats of the week after his 26 of 50 last week, that brought his completion percentage down from 71 or 70% down to 65. He was fourth overall. He's down to 15th overall in completion percentage. 19th in passing yards. But that he, uh, Matt Safford, excuse me, only has eight more passing yards than Mitchell Trubisky, which is interesting, I found. Uh, he's 10th in total passing touchdowns. Lastly, Mitchell Trubisky is second uh, among NFL quarterbacks in rushing yards with 245 rushing yards. Behind Cam Newton? Number one, number one is Cam Newton with the most rushing yards uh, by a quarterback. He actually has 20 more one, 21 more rushes than Mitchell Trubisky. Mitchell Trubisky is 39th in the NFL in rushing yards, uh, be above or ahead of Shady McCoy and Deshaun Watson. Those were your stats of the week. I, I love that um, fourth on third down conversions. Um, 
for all the heat that Nagy has taken, which I've been critical sometimes of the calls of Nagy, I mean, they're still going to done it fourth best in the yeah. league. You know, it, it kind of it really puts things into perspective on what a team actually um, converts at what rate, what percentage, and then even the successful teams. You know, they're not, you know, people don't convert, people don't score 70 points a game. It just doesn't happen. It blows my mind when people are, I can't believe we don't score a touchdown every time. Anyway, I might get fired up today. I was fired up making these notes, but I'm going to get into my what to watch for us. Everyone's waiting for it. They're so crispy. They're so clean. They're so neat. Here they come. Max questionable. Will he play? Um, I don't know. How much will he play? If he does play, are we going to see week one through five, Mac? Or are we going to see weeks six and seven, Mac? Uh, we've witnessed what can happen when you have a healthy Mac on your team. And we have witnessed when you have a not healthy, a hampered Mac. Uh, I'm really hoping that he... After another week of maybe some limited practice, they're getting some time to heal. And I want to see him play. Um, if he wants to play, I love players that grit up and get out there and play. And However, if he's not effective, I am totally okay with mixing in a little Isaiah Irving, somebody some fresh blood, uh, fresh legs to go after and get. We need to get pressure this game. We cannot not get pressure. Um, Sam Darnold will fold to pressure, as we'll see with some stats and whatnot coming out later on during this broadcast. Uh, looks like Cush is out. Um, Eric Daniels expected his first start, and I don't think he's going to get rid of the spot. He will be the starter with his first start until he gets hurt, or and he's just going to take it over. Um, I really love what I've seen from him so far. So strong. Um, I've seen him dominate people, run block. Maybe he gets beat off the line a little bit, but then he recovers and gets back low and gets leverage again. He's just such a good player, um, and I think that he is going to be a guard on our team for a very, very long time. Um, I watch. I think the Jets will try to establish a run with Crowell, who is on pace for about a thousand yard season. I think he had four hundred and fifty nine yards. Um, in prep for the show, um, I did see that uh, Darnold. And their play action game look crisp, so it's it's going to be important for them to try to win this game to establish the run, which they've been able to do. They've been effective with um, Powell and Crowell, and Powell's hurt now. But um, anyway, next back to business. Pace gets back to running with Howard. I think there's opportunities here. The Jets were have given up big plays on stretch run plays and cutbacks, so back to business with Howard. I think we're done playing around. I think that he realizes that we need to get that established quicker, and. I'm going to watch for Fangio to be a little bit more aggressive versus a rookie. Um, this rookie has 10 interceptions on the year. Um, he nearly turned over the ball five times last week. Uh, one interception, I guess, wasn't his fault, but they still call him interceptions. He nearly lost two fumbles and only lost one. So, all that saying, I also saw some opportunities where he got sacked or threw, had to throw the ball away because he didn't get his protection figured out. He didn't have the, which is something that Trubisky feels with, but... He didn't count how many guys he had blocking and figure out where he needed to slide the line or bring an extra guy in, and he had free rushers. Um, and finally, with Robbie Anderson likely out, he's a big play guy. Drafted my fantasy team really late, has not produced. Now he's probably not going to play. They're not going to have anyone to take the top off of the field. Um, I think that we could corral curse, so um, I think that we might see some dial up some pressure and get some pressure, and that's what to watch for from at Shy Bears Plus. What say you at plus underscore shy? What to watch for, as you alluded to uh, initially on your what to watch for, is the Bears pass rush. As you mentioned, we're facing a rookie quarterback, Vic Fangio. Is he going to dial it up? Man coverage, that's going to be a running theme uh, throughout my versions of Bears victory. Plus, is a Bears blowout. That's what to watch for. <laughs> uh, fired up Bears team going up against a uh, beleaguered, uh, New York Jets, rookie quarterback on the road at the lakefront. Let's do this. Bears blowout. Uh, you know, expectations is what to watch for. Uh, hmm. The Bears are once again favored. How many times was John Fox favored during his realm? Well, I think uh, Matt Nagy's almost uh, past that. Okay, so mm -hmm. we're getting close to that. Uh, they On ChicagoBears.com, there was 11 expert picks. Ten experts pick the Bears. And then what to watch for is the Bears special teams. Are they going to be able to prevent 
New York from doing anything drastic that's going to allow them to win because I don't believe the Jets' offense alone is going to do it. Well, great what to watch for us. Um, that's why you come to Shy Bears Plus for those crispy, crispy, crispy what to watch for us. Moving along, we are going to our Bears Victory Pluses. I'm going to start off with the Bears. 60 minutes, three phases, no more letdowns by one unit. If you are going to be a playoff team, if you are going to be a contender, you find a way to get it done, all three. Maybe all three aren't great, but you can't have these letdowns. The Patriots didn't have letdowns last week, did they? And they found a way to win the game. Um, if all units play the potential, I think this should be a blowout. If not, we have a letdown, which I think is what's going to happen because I don't have any trust in this team to have all three and play a complete game. Um, I think it's going to be a lot closer than uh, most people are picking. And I'm done playing around. Run the ball early. Establish a run with Howard. Take a nice long drive to start the game. Establish a run. Howard 20 carries. I love passing the ball, but it doesn't have to be so passy. And it doesn't have to be always so finicky. Um, just run it early and then build off the play action. Everything builds off of the run. And I think there are opportunities to be had. Minimum 15 carries for Howard. Um, that's what I think we should do to win this game. Um, also, we will not risk the second half Bears meltdown of the defense. of No tackling and no hustle if we can control the time of position. Um, but yes, mix in those shotguns. Um, and run from the ace formation. I already said ace formation stretch run. Also, the Jets got burned on the uh, two times last week with the bootleg off of the stretch run. So if we could get that going, Trubisky has thrived in 2018 and 2017 off the naked bootleg uh, with the flood action. Um, stop Isaiah Crowell. Stop him. Otherwise, you are not going to do yourselves any favors. Again, just like Tom Brady, Darnold. Has had an up-and-down year, but he has been very, very crisp in the play-action game. So you have to stop the run, or you're going to put yourself in deep trouble. You want to get yourself back into the third and long situations. Score early on your home turf, and make them play from behind. Take the lead, be aggressive, and just blow this team out. Put your foot on the throats. And my final Bears victory plus, Trubisky versus Trubisky. He's my favorite bear to watch. He's my favorite bear to criticize. I get sucked in and watching Trubisky the entire game, and I lose sight of all the other things that are going on sometimes. But, because it's so fun to watch sometimes, he's throwing 300 yards, he's throwing three touchdowns, that Trubisky is really developing. However, I do get frustrated when he does not have proper footwork and he loses it. And it's not every time anymore. He picks his times where he's good and he's bad. And I understand when you have a 300-pound dude in your face and you want to throw off your back foot, if you can make the throw, I get it. Save yourself. It's a long season. But when you have the clean pocket, that's when it drives me absolutely bonkers. Put your foot in the ground and drive and follow through and make a crisp throw and be accurate. Don't be fundamentally unsound when you don't have to be. Those are my Bears victory pluses. Sorry it took so long. Thanks for being patient. What say you at plus underscore shy? Bears victory pluses. What is it going to take for the Bears to bring home the W at Soldier Field? Number one is Blitz, the rookie quarterback. Like it. Stop going with three man rushes, four man rushes, dropping eight and seven. Let's blitz five, six, seven guys. Disguise things, man coverage. I'm not scared of these New York Jets skill position. I don't think anybody is. Get up on their faces, disrupt the routes, get some pressure. Rookie quarterback, force some. Th- so, Excuse me, for some things, let's get that uh, pressure. Establish rhythm, but also maintain rhythm. The Bears have scored the least amount of points in the fourth quarter, or they have the worst fourth quarter point differential in the league. So not only do they have to start off uh, early in a productive manner, they need to maintain that. And I think they started to do that at, at Miami. They scored some more points later on in the game. Uh, uh, as opposed to what happened in Green Bay. Energy, energy throughout the entire game. That kind of goes out to that same point of maintaining that rhythm. Let's have energy. Let's have energy at the crowd. Uh, We're playing at home. Let's be fired up. This is a perfect advantage. Uh, 
place for the Bears to take advantage of uh, a team that may not have as much talent as the Bears do right now. And then team tackling. Bears victory plus can the Bears tackle as a team preventing the big plays? Then there should be a victory at Soldier Field. I love it. I love all those, especially that first one. Just look back to last year. How many times did we see um, man under one where they just manned up on our dudes and they said, beat me, you can't. We didn't have the weapons last year. No one was scared. There are teams that we shouldn't be scared of, and I feel like this Jets team is one of them. Prove that you could beat me, and then I'll go back into coverage, and then I'll adjust from there. But um, never pretend you're weak when you're strong. That's my philosophy on things. Um, <laughs> when you're this Let me write that down. And when you're this strong, like Shy Bears Plus, you deserve all the follows, and you never pretend that you're weak. Anyway... Jets victory pluses. You hate to see a Jets victory, but here's what they need to do if they want to win the game. Run the ball, like I said, and possess the ball. Wear my Chicago Bears team out. They have shown they will wear down if they are on the field in the fourth quarter. They don't play a, a complete 60 minutes, four quarters. Let's see what do it. Um, with Paul out of the game, we might see more cannon of the backfield. And I think he had four catches for 60 yards. He's a weapon. We have seen teams use... Backs who can catch on the backfield in space on the screen game, um, running these, running into the flat, catching balls and making plays, and us not tackling. So that's something to look for. And the Bears have been giving up a ton of yak lately. So be on the lookout for him. Um, that's right. Take a step back. Um, if you are the Jets, and don't put so much trust in Darnold. You don't have to. You run the ball good enough. You know what? Take it out of his hands. He's proven, which I hated him in college. I didn't hate him, but I didn't feel like he should be picked over uh, like a Baker Mayfield type because his efficiency and touchdown interception was not there because he would play hero ball and he would try to fit it in. And he, if you let him put him in a situation where he has to try to force something, he will make a mistake. So, hey, keep it simple. So what? You get down 17-10. You ain't going to have to order it <laughs> Calm down. Last week, they didn't... They, Went full throttle. I feel like they panicked, and the Vikings took advantage of it, and they got started getting their interceptions and their fumbles, and then blew that game wide open. Um, the Bulls blitz is my final one. Todd Bulls is notorious for bringing the pressure. He did it in Arizona. That's what got him his head coaching job. And you know what? Just like right behind Jeff, it says BU. I say BU and, and make Mitch prove it. If there's any, I said it before. I want to see someone really, really challenge Mitch Trubisky, just like we should be challenging uh, Sam Darnold this week. Uh, so dial it up. Uh, however, I think it's everywhere. Oh, my gosh. Um, I think Mitch is getting better at beating the Blitz, so maybe that's why we're not seeing it. You're starting to see him hit his hots. You're starting to see him hit his brick checkdowns. But if you want to play us straight up, I don't think that you have the horses. You don't have the jet fuel in your fuselage to beat the Chicago Bears. So you're going to have to be aggressive and make some stuff happen. So those are my Jets victory pluses. Hope they don't happen, but that's the way I would do it. Picking up where you let up, left off, the Jets need to have number 10 beat them. Yep. Put eight in the box. Old school last year, that's how they beat the Bears. That's the only way they're going to beat the Bears this week. Jets victory plus is... Score on defense, score on special teams, big plays from the offense somehow, trick plays, whatever it takes, fake punt, flea flicker, score, any way possible. You're going to need all the points you can get. Uh, Isaiah Corral needs to dominate. He needs to have like 150 yards rushing, another 50 yards receiving. Not sure it's going to happen. Yep. Take the pressure off of Sam Darnold over there. And then, um, yeah, that was pretty much it. Those are my New York Jets victory pluses. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. Unlike me, but very good ones. And I felt we had a lot of similarities in there. We're seeing the same stuff, and we don't go over, like, we don't pre plan this. This is just, uh, we're trying to give you two different people our opinions of what we're seeing. So, I mean, maybe we got, maybe we're right on this. Uh, finally, here on the show, we do like to go over our predictions for the game. Um, would you like to go first, Jeff? Are you ready? Yeah, I'd love to. Take the lead? And uh, as always, I do pick the Bears in Jeff's best 
That's 16, 11, and 1 for the season. 3-3 three and three last week. Uh, we still have not been below 500 uh, for any of the weeks, making that money. But this week, the Bears are favored at home once again. I'm going to have them cover. I think they're eight-point favorites. I can't remember. It's been a long week. They, they could be 38-point favorites and still win this thing. I don't know what the math checks out, but they're big favorites. Whoa. Give it to me. Hey, I see a lot of similarities here between this game and the Tampa Bay game. There's going to be a lot of turnovers by the Bears defense, giving the Bears short fields, or they're going to score pick sixes, force fumbles, that kind of stuff, or the Bears are going to be in some really short fields. Porous Jets defense, I like the Bears to be able to move the ball at will. Big time, bear down, 45-17, Chicago Bears. And I think those opportunities are there, and especially if we start with a run. They're giving up 105 rushing yards a game. They are porous, and I think that we could do it. I wish I was ambitious, and and just I, I wish I had your um, your enthusiasm for this game, which because I don't. And I mean, I, I wish I could predict that this game is going to be a blowout because I think it should be a blowout. I just can't do it, man. And um, first, can't I couldn't trust the offense. Then I couldn't trust the defense. Now, is the special teams going to let me down with 14 more points? Dude, who is this Bears team? Who are these three units? Woo, woo. I don't know. And if the Bears win this game, I think Fortune is going to smile upon them for the rest of the season. If not, it could be gloom and doom. You're looking at, what, a three-game losing streak here? Um, so it'll be three and four. This game... You have to beat a team you are supposed to beat if you want me at Shy Bears Plus to believe in you that you are a playoff team and you are who you think you are, who you say you are, a team with unlimited potential. But dropping under 500 to a team you shouldn't lose to, they have no business beating you. They're hurt. They're not as talented. It could be catastrophic. It could have implications for the entire season. It is time to show up. It's time to show up for four quarters. It is time to show up. Three phases, 60 minutes, it's time to show up and step up and no more letdowns. I don't care about being outplayed or being outmatched. I care about lack of effort, lack of focus. Things like that is what really drives you nuts as a fan. And it's time to, every once in a while, you're going to play a dude that's bigger and better than you. And you might lose a positional battle. You might lose the guy in front of you. But you have to will it out, right? I mean, you have to. I've been in situations. I'm not in the NFL. I played some good talent in high school football, and guys kicked my butt, and I just knew that, you know what? I had to get in the way. You know, I just had to do my job the best I could. And so, effort, tackling, blocking, focus, those are all the things that I want to see for four quarters. LFG, let's freaking go and get this win. Four quarters, do it out. Sorry to the rant. Feeling passionate today because this could be the difference of whether we are talking about okay, here we're talking about how is the progress going to be for the next for the whole rest of this year. What are we looking at? How is Mitch going? How is Pace looking? Do we have the right people in place for next year? I want to be able to talk about for the rest of this year about a winning team, playoffs, matchup playoffs. And what's going to happen in this game, I feel like it's do or die to whether how this program goes for the rest of the year. So that's how I feel. Here's my prediction. Bears 27, Jets 17. How am I looking Move at it. Back? Move it back. We're moving back. There you go. That's the whiteboard. At Shy Bears Plus. That's where I'm at. I think the team should I think we should beat this team by 30. But we didn't beat the Dolphins by 30. And I thought we were a much better team than that, too. So we'll see who shows up. So I'm Robert at Shy Bears Plus on Twitter, on Instagram, here on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you slap that bell. You don't want to miss the content. You don't want to miss the passion. You don't want to miss everything we going on, heck, going on, and you don't want to miss Jeff's picks either. So, Jeff, plug yourself, final thoughts, and then take us home, please.
You got it, pal. I'm Jeff with Shy Bears. Plus, you can follow me on Twitter at plus underscore shy. Always giving you the best bets. Not Mike Norstal, but pretty darn close. Bears, big time win. We're going to take down the Jets, the Bills, and the Lions. Six and three next three weeks. You heard it here first. Bear down. That's all she wrote.